Hi, everybody, and welcome to the second session of the State Support Team Region 8 Adolescent mm -hmm. Literacy Series. I'm Tracy Mail. And I'm Debbie Thurl. We're excited you're here with us to dig into the Science of Reading Foundations, including vocabulary to support our adolescent readers. We chose the Science of Reading Foundations as the second webinar topic because it's helpful to understand how the brain learns to read, to be able to plan lessons that are effective for adolescents, and to figure out why some students are struggling. Just to remind you, we've designed a series of short focused webinars that's going, going to be introduced on the State Support Team Region 8 YouTube channel. These videos are for your individual learning or for collaborative team discussions, whether they're happening in your school building or virtually. The series right now is focusing on the why and the what of vocabulary instruction for adolescent readers. And in the fall, we're gonna start with the how, including some ideas of how to support diverse learners. Our agenda today is focused around the importance of understanding the science of reading and how it addresses vocabulary as one of the most highly recommended strategies for adolescent literacy in every subject area. Also, resources are provided for you in the information se section below this video. Learning targets for this webinar show an urgency behind the need to address adolescent literacy. This includes building vocabulary and background knowledge in the content areas in grades four through 12. In order to do that, we know it's critical to understand the foundations of literacy development. Adolescent literacy is an important topic in our schools across the nation. However, in Ohio, where our support team is located, we have an overall vision for the education of all of our students. Ohio's vision is that each child is challenged, they're prepared, and they're empowered. In order for students to be successful under this plan, all students must have the opportunity to become proficient readers. So to understand the elements of this plan related to literacy, Ohio is advocating that the science of reading drives all literacy conversations and content, as well as development and the organization of our resources. This webinar is all about the foundations of literacy that you see here on this slide. It's important that teachers un understand the, these foundations no matter what grade level they teach. This reminds me of our basement and an incident we had several years ago. We noticed that there was water pouring into the basement any time it rained. And when you are in Ohio, you know that happens all the time. We couldn't figure out where it was coming from until we dug down into the foundation of our house. We discovered the foundation, which should have been solid bricks, actually had gaps where the contractor saved time and saved money by using fewer bricks. When the foundation has gaps or holes between the bricks, water pours in. We were going to have to fix the foundation and make it solid. The learning foundation of reading also needs to be solid and automatic for our students to be good readers. If students are not good readers in the adolescent grades, the teacher needs to dig down to the foundation to identify the gaps and intervene. It's time to activate your thinking about what we just talked about. On your own or with your colleagues, consider the question on the slide and take five minutes to brainstorm what could be causing those gaps you see in your students' reading skills. Make sure to restart the webinar after your discussion so we can continue our conversation. Let's take a look at this slide about the science of reading. 
what we're talking about when we refer to the science of reading is the body of research that shows us the sequence of skills that develop and when they develop. What may come as a surprise is that learning to read isn't natural for our brains and not something that we as humans just pick up from watching or listening to other people read. This means that reading needs to be explicitly taught with methods that are shown to work with the way our brains develop. Sometimes students don't master reading skills at the expected milestones, which creates gaps in their ability to be proficient at reading comprehension. As you know, the young children who struggle in elementary school become our adolescent readers who struggle to read and perform at grade level. So, as we discussed earlier with my foundation story, we had to research different methods of fixing the problem to identify the best solution. So being teachers of adolescent learners forces us to investigate what is proven to work to fill the gaps as well as how to instruct adolescent readers on a daily basis. The National Reading Panel in 2000 identified these as important areas of instruction. This chart looks at five big ideas of reading in both elementary and secondary grades. In the elementary grades, the five big ideas build the foundational skills to learn to read. But in the secondary grades, the focus transitions into skills that support reading to learn. Notice that the vocabulary is a skill that should be addressed across all grade levels. On this slide, we see a graphic of the simple view of reading formula. This isn't new, but the concept has been proven to be the way our brains learn to read. It's based on a widely accepted view that reading includes two basic components, decoding, which is word level reading, and language comprehension, which allows us to understand oral language. These two big buckets of skills both have to be mastered in order for reading comprehension to happen, hence the multiplication sign. In other words, if students are lacking skills in one of these areas, reading comprehension can't happen. So why would this information be important for someone who works with second student, secondary students? Well, um, because understanding the simple view of reading formula can help teachers understand what skills to explicitly embed into their instruction, as well as identify strengths and weaknesses in students' language and literacy skills and match the weak skills to evidence-based instruction and intervention. Let's go a little bit deeper with what Tracy was just talking about and look at the five big ideas for adolescent readers through the simple view of reading. The graphic on this slide shows how the simple view of reading breaks out into the word recognition skills and the language comprehension skills. Even though the formula is the same for both elementary and secondary, the skills to master are a little different, as we mentioned before. The simple view of reading formula results in successful reading comprehension. This gets us thinking about reading comprehension and what instruction for it really looks like. Basically, reading comprehension is a result of having the solid foundation of word recognition skills and language comprehension skills. This might be a good time to stop the webinar and talk about how these secondary word recognition and language comprehension skills are intentionally integrated into your current practices across content areas and with all learners. Do you instruct on these skills or do you instruct on reading comprehension? 
what skills should be integrated into your instruction to promote effective middle school and high school readers? So pause the webinar now and come back at the end of your discussion. We've been talking about the simple view of reading for adolescent learners, but we want to make the connection with the foundational skills that typically develop in elementary grades. One of the best ways to do this is by looking at the graphic of Hollis Scarborough's reading rope. It represents just how complex and interwoven the foundational skills are for word recognition and language comprehension in order to achieve skilled reading. The graphic is the simple view of reading formula turned on its side with the skills that make up each of the big buckets. So what do you notice about the rope? One major thing to notice is how the two areas of the simple view of reading are intertwined. The skills of word recognition are braided and the language comprehension skills are twisted. This is significant. So imagine braiding hair, and if one of the pieces is smaller or missing, the braid will be loose and messy. The three word recognition skills need to be tightly woven and braided and solidly internalized by adolescent students to the point of being automatic. The twisted language comprehension area is made up of discrete skills that are constantly building and adding layers of learning through experiences with language. So when the two big strands come together, the complete rope results in solid reading comprehension. The word recognition skills must be solid and automatic while students become more strategic in their use of the language comprehension skills. The four part processor model you see on this slide illustrates how the brain learns to read and write. This model is relevant for preschool through high school teachers to understand in order to embed reading and writing into instruction. As the Letters 3rd Edition Manual published in 2019 tells us, instruction should aim to educate all of the processing systems and enable them to work together. That could seem unnecessary for middle and high school teachers to be aware of because instruction is primarily dealing with the meaning and context processors. But it's also critical to be aware of students' skill levels in the phonological and orthographic processors that deal with speech sounds and written words. Let's talk about some quick details now for each of these processing areas then we'll elaborate on this model some more in another webinar section and talk about how it impacts all of your learners, including students with disabilities and English learners. Basically, the brain learns to read starting with speech sounds as we hear and learn to speak a language. That is phonological awareness, and it happens in the phonological processing system on the bottom left of the model. When the brain learns speech sounds, it then connects those sounds with symbols, which in the English language are letters. This magic happens in the orthographic processor at the bottom right. When our brain learns the sound symbol connections known as phonics, we can read and write words. Those are the two processors at the bottom of the model, but it isn't enough to just be able to read and write. So those words are interpreted 
by the meaning processor in the middle of the model. And this is where vocabulary learning happens. As we all know, words can be used differently. So the context processor, which is driven by experiences and background knowledge, gives support to the meaning processor. This explanation may seem complex and theoretical, but it really is important for all educators to understand this process. So can't wait to talk about this more later and how this model can be used to support our diverse learners. We know there's a ton of complex and possibly new information in this webinar, and we hope that it really has gotten you to start thinking. Um, so from all of the science-based information on how kids learn to read, think about or discuss one of the pieces that stood out to you and how it may have provided some insight into your students' behavior during reading or how they interact with your daily instruction. Stop the webinar for a few minutes and be sure to start the webinar again after your discussion. Today's webinar focused on the importance of understanding the science of reading and how the brain learns to read. As a reminder, we provided resources uh, in the information section below this YouTube video for you to review. We are excited that you chose to join us on this webinar today. Please contact us if you have any questions about this content. We look forward to continuing our dive in adolescent literacy with the third webinar in our series, What is Vocabulary Instruction? See you then.